all right what is up youtube we're here today with another genesis scoop engine build video um as you can see there's a lot more stuff on the engine that wasn't there before uh i did record the videos on me installing everything but as i was editing those videos uh they actually got deleted so it's unfortunate but i'm gonna go ahead and do pretty much a quick summary of it of everything that i put on how to put it on you know all that good stuff but before we get into that, uh, make sure you drop a like on this video, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to this channel for more Genesis Scoop uh, engine build updates and uh, engine work, actually. So, again, I, I mentioned in my previous videos before that I do plan on working not only on the 2.0T engine, but on my friend's 3.8 engine. We're actually going to supercharge it uh, coming within this uh, the next next year or so. So, uh, we're going to do a legit build on it. Uh, we're going to be aiming for about roughly seven to eight hundred wheel on that 3.8 powered by motec so uh we'll see how that build goes uh i'm still waiting on him to get some parts but hopefully we can get those videos in soon all right so i'm just gonna start from the back of the engine um i did install my emission model uh coolant lines back here they're very easy to install out of the engine when it's inside the engine it's pretty hard to get back here to move this clamp out and uh pull these out and it's also it gets really messy too with all the coolant that leaks out so I was able to put these on. I put both of them on. This is the top and bottom. And I also put this hose right here. This goes to your water pump and this goes to the back of the back of the block for the coolant. Up next, I did install my turbo. Um, it's not clocked on the compressor housing, but it is clocked on the exhaust oil housing. As you can see right here, I have my oil feed line facing up, which it's supposed to be facing up and I have my oil drain line facing down which is what you want it to be because you want gravity to pull that oil down whenever the car is off i did install the motor mounts to pretty it's a really tight fit right here with the cpe exhaust manifold some of you guys asked me about the fitment on it it's it's very tight but it fits it clears it the engine mounts both sides they're held on by four i believe 14 millimeter bolts you got one two three and four it's easy to install it and then same deal on this side there's one down there two three and four right there all right so up next i did install the water pump and the water pump is held in by five bolts all five bolts are different lengths these this one right here and that one those are smaller bolts and this right here is a little like medium range kind of bolt and then this right there and the bolt down here they're kind of longer bolts so just a quick FYI, if you guys got ever mixed up your bolts and wonder where they went, that's the order they go in and uh, the placement of those bolts. So I had a lot of you guys ask me uh, what I did for, uh, since I don't, since I have a precision turbo, what do I use for my coolant lines? Like, what do I do with them? Well, in my case, all I did was, you see this right here? All I did was have this, uh, this coolant port right here, basically just cut off and weld it shut. That's all I did for that one. And then for the other dude, you can't see him. Well, there he is. For this port right here, all I did was just put this there and tying it down. It's just a clamp and a cap. That's all I did. And there's no water that goes through it. So uh, that's what I did. Or what you can do also is just get a regular hose and just run it to each other. That's what I see a lot of people do as well. But in my case, I just felt more comfortable doing that. It was just easier to me. And then I also had a lot of you guys ask, like, what do I do with uh, the coolant lines that are up here? Because I know there's coolant lines that go through here, that go to the, the throttle body and then under the intake manifold. Uh, what I did with those coolant lines, all I did was cap this dude right here. I capped that guy, which connects to this coolant line right here. But I cut that off. And then it feeds into here and it goes into that coolant line. So all I did was just to, to cap the flow, was just cap this off. And then for this dude right here, same deal. Just got a little cap and a, a clamp and just tying it down and it's good to go. You don't have to deal with that ever again. So I recommend doing that, the coolant bypass, that's what it's called. I recommend doing the coolant bypass if you live in a state or a place where the, uh, where your weather doesn't reach below negative 20 degrees. Cause if it reaches below negative 20 degrees, then your electric throttle body will not open. The purpose of that coolant going through your throttle body is to make sure the throttle body can get warmed up so the, the actuator can work. 
If not, it's gonna stay frozen shut and that's the last thing you're gonna want. So that's why uh, where I live, I live in Texas, that's why I just deleted it because it doesn't get that cold around here. All right, so up next, I did install the power steering bracket. Uh, it's gonna be held on by four bolts. It's this piece right here. It holds in the power steering pump, of course. You got two 12s right here. And then you got two 12s right there. Those two 12s that hold in the power steering pump bracket. After that, you're allowed to put in the power steering pump. And it's kind of tricky putting in the pump because you gotta like, you gotta put it in basically on the bottom first. And then you gotta do the top bolt. And then we come up here and because I don't have those coolant pipes anymore, I went ahead and put catch cans right here. It really cleans up the look of the front of the engine. Looks really nice once everything's installed. I am going to be using AN fittings. So basically how you would run the catch can setup is this right here. will come in to your, your end port, goes down to the baffle. And then what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to put a filter on here, a breather filter. Oh, you can buy the filters like at AutoZone for like $10, $12. They're pretty cheap. And then same deal for this. This would be your PCV valve. And this would go all the way over here into here. Or actually this one right here. So your PCV will go from right here to the inlet. And then your breather tube would be right here. So that's how I have my catch can set up. Also, if you guys are looking for a cheap uh, solution to making your own catch can bracket, I did make my own. All I did was go to Home Depot Get this little pipe and see if I can find it actually. All right, so all I did was go to Home Depot, uh, cut a did all my measurements for it, cut a piece off, drilled a hole, and then uh, use this to pretty much anchor my uh, catch cans like that. So that piece was basically this piece right here. And like, like I said, all I did was just cut it, measure it right, and then uh, drilled a hole to make the bolt in there. Drilled two holes right here to make the these little uh, Screws go in and that was it. This is just a temporary setup though because eventually I'm gonna be getting a Evo 10 valve cover and that valve cover is aluminum. So what I plan on doing is put, uh, getting that aluminum valve cover and putting uh, two or three 10 AN fittings to a custom catch can setup that I plan on doing. All right, so after the catch cans, I went ahead and installed the pulleys. These are my pulleys right here. You got one, two, three, and four. Uh, this one, this one, and this one, they're 15 mils. This dude is a 17 mil, and this is a 14 mil. This is your tensioner pulley. You pull this up, and it puts tension on your belt. And that's it for the pulleys. Not, nothing really special. Um, if you guys plan on, uh, powder coating the, the, the wheels like how I did, uh, this size socket for the alternator pulley is a size 24 millimeter. And then down here for the power steering pump pulley, these are all 10 millimeter bolts, okay? Uh, and uh, one thing I forgot to mention, the power steering pump, it's held in by two 12 millimeters. So you got this 12 millimeter and you got that 12 millimeter. So just a quick FYI before I forget. And then your fuel rail course, it's held in by two 12 millimeter bolts. One right here, right there. This is your fuel rail. Um, yes, I know it's plastic and it's not ideal. Uh, my friend Moody, he's actually making a fuel rail for the the Genesis Coupes, the 3.8s and 2.0Ts. I don't know when it's gonna be coming out, but hopefully soon, but it has a built-in AN fittings on both sides. It has a built-in dampener up top. It, it looks really nice from what I saw from design-wise. So I can't wait to buy it and put it on and show you guys what it looks like. Hopefully within the next three or four months. Um, the injector sizes I'm using, these are 2200cc injectors from Bosch. Uh, yes, they fit. The reason why they fit though is because I have uh, 10 millimeter top hats. I believe that's what the size they were. 10 or 15 millimeter top hats. Those are the top hat sizes that you would need to make the injectors fit this fuel rail. And if you don't know what top hats are, just go ahead and just give it a quick Google. They're basically adapters to, to make it longer. But uh, yeah, there's the fuel rail injectors. Uh, this is for the fuel line. This is a custom 6AN fitting adapter plate. For the fuel line and after we got that installed we did put in the intake manifold the intake manifold is held in by five bolts okay and it does have a gasket as well so you got let me see you got one bolt right here got another bolt another bolt right there and you got let's see you got a bolt right there 
and then you got a bolt right there. So you have a total of five bolts. They're all 12 millimeters. It's pretty easy to put them on and take them off. To get to the this bad boy, it's not hard at all to get to it. You just go through here. Um, to get this one, this bolt right here, this is the trickiest bolt to get. So what you would have to do is get an adapter, a swivel pretty much, an extension, and then just see how there's a little room right here. You would just get it right in there and you can, you'll be able to take it off. Um, this bolt's pretty easy. All you have to do is go through here. Down there is pretty easy and, and right here is pretty easy. So that's how you install the intake manifold. All right guys, and finally, the last thing I put on was my knock sensor. This is your only knock sensor in this engine, okay? And it goes mounted right here. But, uh, yep, that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna put on, there's usually a coolant pipe that goes right here. I'm not gonna put it on yet uh, until I have everything in the engine bay because I want to be able to make sure I have room to put my wires in and everything. Uh, the throttle body is not going on. I need to send it out to get uh, powder coated. Unfortunately, I, I totally forgot about it. The belt's not on, I'll do that last. And what else am I missing? And that's pretty much, pretty much it. All right guys, before I forget to mention this to you guys and you guys go into this later on whenever you're putting the engine back in. Um, so BK1 and BK2 starters are completely different sizes, okay? The BK1 starter is longer and the BK2 starter is shorter. So if you have a BK1 starter, okay? You had to put in the starter first before putting in this motor mount. If you put it in last, it's not gonna work because it doesn't fit because of how long it is. But if you have a BK2 starter, you can put it in whenever you want. It, it slides right in with a, with a certain angle. But if you have a BK1 starter, it's impossible to put it in with the motor mount on. You have to take off the motor mount. So. Uh, I 100% recommend putting on the starter first, letting it hang, and then putting the motor mount. That way it just stays in place, so whenever you put the engine back in, it will all just slide back in together. You know what, I'm gonna, my friend gave me a really good idea earlier, actually. I'm gonna go over something with you guys that not a lot of people understand, quite frankly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in this video because I have a lot of time left in it. So let's talk about uh, lightweight pulleys, because I know some of you guys are just like, how can we just didn't order lightweight pulleys? For these guys well for starters I wanted to all match one color so I, I sent all my stuff to the to one dude who powder coated everything just one color for me so it can all match two uh, these are for free you know you can just take these off at any time and powder coat them and three usually in the lightweight pulley kit you get the crank pulley the problem with the lightweight crank pulley is it's really bad to put it on actually. It's it's a big no-no in the car world. You're never supposed to put on a lightweight pulley on an engine. Uh, to be specific, a lightweight uh, crank pulley. The reason why is because that lightweight crank pulley is built thin and built to lose a lot of weight compared to the OEM crank pulley. So where that gets controversial is since it's, since you lose the capability of uh, suppressing the harmonic vibrations that the OEM crankshaft pulley is supposed to do its original job. You basically toss that out the window when you get a lightweight crank pulley. So in other words, when you have a lightweight crank pulley, you don't have harmonic vibration uh, protection. So in other words, when you get a lightweight crank pulley, um, you lose your, you basically use your dampening for that pulley. And a lot of you guys are like, what is dampening? Well, your OEM crankshaft pulley comes with a, a pretty much built-in dampener system. And that dampener system is to help pr uh, reduce harmonic vibrations. So if you get a lightweight crank pulley, that's where it saves the weight from, is from deleting all of that uh, uh, dampening material that's built inside the OEM crank pulley. So essentially, you're putting on a lightweight pulley that has no harmonic dampening effects and that's really bad for the engine. So basically you're increasing uh, harmonic vibrations in the engine and that's really bad. So pretty much you're, you're wearing out your bearings faster, you're wearing out your oil pump faster, and you're pretty much throwing off your rotating assembly system as well. So that's why I don't recommend using lightweight uh, crank pulleys. The other pulleys are fine. 
It's just this pulley. You don't want to do that too. Um, and a lot of you guys are like asking, well, how come you got a fluid amper? Isn't that like kind of like the same thing? No, the fluid amper is 100% opposite. It helps harmonic vibrations. Uh, it helps reduce harmonic vibrations in the engine. So that's the whole purpose of a fluid amper. So with less harmonic vibrations, theoretically, you put less stress on the oil pump, your bearings, and your rotating assembly system. That is why it is important to get one of these because it can make or break an engine potentially. All right, guys, so that's gonna be pretty much it for this video today. Uh, my next video, I do plan on doing a build breakdown as well as uh, putting it with a price sheet so you guys can know exactly what I brought and how much I spent on this build, okay? But uh, until next time, guys, laters.